Okay, a bit of a uh, diversion and digression uh, to homomorphic encryption. Now, I'm, uh, I don't know when they're going to start asking questions about this on the exam. This is uh, uh, fairly new in terms of people talking about it, although, as I point out, there's um, you know, certain things that we have been doing with it. It's not actually that new a concept, but... Uh, Anyways, the, the point of homomorphic encryption is that you encrypt the data and you are still able to perform functions on the data without uh, doing decryption on it. Um, so, as, as I say, this is uh, not a new concept. Um, we use it in... Uh, password security. We um, hash the uh, password, which is basically encryption where we cannot recover it. And then when we uh, ask somebody for their password, we hash that and compare the two hashes. And if they're the same, then yes, they get in. So that is, um, you know, a use in terms of comparison um, and getting a match. Um, now, uh, that is, uh, th that presents us with some weaknesses. Um, for example, um, this is going to be very similar to uh, ECB mode for block ciphers, electronic code book, which, as I noted, is, is sort of the simplest but also the weakest form of, uh, mo or rather mode, of uh, symmetric block encryption. Because when you have identical uh, plain text, you have an identical match with uh, the ciphertext. And the, uh, you know, that, that does present us with a bit of a weakness. And, and uh, we have to... Uh, account for that in, in terms of, you know, what we can use uh, homomorphic encryption for. Um, the, uh, we, we can, uh, as I say, um, it's uh, not completely new. If you use, for example, Caesar cipher um, and you want to uh, sort um, Items you can do a sort. It's not going to be completely accurate, but it, it will give you a a rough uh, sorting um, that uh, you may be able to use for certain purposes. And so um, the thing is with homomorphic encryption, the the function that you want to perform determines what type of algorithm you use. You cannot use the same homomorphic encryption for all functions. You have to choose, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that, um, and pick your algorithm accordingly, or even make an algorithm, because we don't have a huge wide variety of uh, examples of, of homomorphic encryption so far. Um, we do have uh, some some very interesting ones. Um, uh, Revest's three ballot voting system, um, and I, it's you know this is quite quite interesting. Um, when you know we have talked about uh, online voting um, and. Uh, the, the problems associated with it and, and uh, you know, the, the voting machines and, and mechanisms and so on and so forth. Now, um, the, uh, the revest algorithm doesn't solve all the problems and it's going to be considerably more complex in terms of the implementation than, than some of the systems that are proposed. But it does uh, provide for a lot of the things that we want in a ballot. Um, it is anonymous. Um, it, but it also provides for non-repudiation of voting. You, you cannot say, 
uh, oh, I didn't vote that way, I voted this way, you know, um, because somebody can ask you then to, to prove it. And uh, uh, so you can, uh, you can verify. You cannot um, say, I didn't vote uh, again. It's, um, uh, you know, it, it provides that. So it provides us with new things um, that we haven't had before. It also is verifiable to the voter that their vote has been counted. Um, and it provides that uh, access. Um, the, uh, the ballots can be counted without being decrypted. Again, you know, homomorphic encryption here, um, that we can count the ballots. Uh, we know who won uh, without actually decrypting the ballots. So, um, and oh, and, and this isn't just a, a system uh, that uh, has to run in, in voting machines or online voting or something like that. Um, this can, in fact, be implemented on a paper ballot as well to provide all of these uh, additional functions, um, which we, you know, many of which we don't have in our current voting system, um, with, uh, uh, with paper ballots. And so, um, it's, you know, it's really, really interesting. Um, so, uh, but it is going to be computationally intensive. And it is also going to be, as I say, uh, dependent on what type of function you want. You know, we, uh, we've talked about comparison, we've talked about uh, sorting, we've talked about um, uh, voting issues. Um, there are uh, algorithms that are available for homomorphic encryption that allow you to do <clears throat> um, uh, addition and uh, multiplication. Um, and you know, uh, a few other functions. But uh, this is, uh, you know, in, in terms of overall functions and, and use in business, this is still in early stages. You know, addition, multiplication, so we could get to uh, issues of um, inventory and, and ledger uh, entries um, and have all the, the entries uh, encrypted and still be useful for, you know, balancing and, and uh, giving us totals and those types of things, or ensuring that the totals don't go over a set limit. But, um, you know, there are many, many other uh, things that we can't do yet. Uh, we will, you know, there are ways of mathematically designing, uh, assessing what the function actually is, and therefore determining what kind of algorithm we can use to get that function.